In this video, I'm going to show you how you can create this really neat looking four quadrant rotational symmetry piece. It's easier than it looks, and all you need is paper and either a light pad or some tracing paper. So I'm going to be using the light pad method, but everything that I'm doing you can also do with tracing paper instead. You just need to be able to see through the paper that you're writing on because we're going to be creating an original and then manually copying it four times. So whichever supplies you have on hand, go ahead and get them. If you don't have a light pad or tracing paper, you can also um, hold tape these together and hold it up to a window so that you can see through it. Um, but I do strongly recommend getting a light pad. All right, well, let's get started. So to start off, I'm going to use a small piece of paper and you can use either the corner of a piece of paper that you have or a post-it note. This is just a white um, square that's about the size of a post-it note and you can write your word on it. So you can either write your word just straight along with the square or you could create it going diagonally like this. I think that's what I'm going to do. And I'm going to try to fill as much space as possible within this square. Okay, so then the next step is taking the piece of paper that I'm actually going to write my final um, rotation on. So this is just a blank piece of paper and we need to find the center. So I like to just fold it in half twice. If you didn't want your paper to have these creases in it, you could just use a pencil and ruler and measure out where the center is. But we want a pretty defined, not only center point, but also these are kind of like the axes of the rotation because what we're going to end up doing is lining up this, this piece of paper um, along, along these lines here. All right, the next step is using a light pad. So right now I have my, my words behind this piece of paper on top of the light pad. I'm going to turn it on so that I can see through it. So I'm going to try to line up this square of paper that I wrote my word on with the lines on my paper that are showing where the center is. So you can see through here, you can see the paper, and now I'm going to try it. So what I don't want is for this to be like really far away from this line or crooked at all. I wanna get it exactly lined up with, with this little X in the middle that we've created with the creases or with the pencil lines. So then I'm just going to simply trace over this, trying to get it exactly as perfect of a copy as possible because I'm going to need to do this four times. All right, so I've got my first copy done. And now, so the goal is going to end up having the words be written here and then here, and here, and here. So what I'm gonna do is, um, to kind of help me figure this out, what I could do is rotate this to where I want it, then rotate my paper so that I'm writing upright, and then I'll put this back in the back here and try to line it up as closely as possible. So it might be a little bit confusing um, putting this behind the paper, like if you accidentally put it this way, then it's not gonna be rotated, or if you put it like all the way upside down like this, then it's not the same. So a little trick is to just look to see what's in the corner here. So I can see that the R starts in the corner and then that's how I can line up my paper as well. Okay, and then we can do the same thing. Keep this in place, rotate our paper so that the R stays in the center and just repeat two more times. So this is what the final piece looks like, and it kind of looks like um, those snowflakes that you may have cut out when you were a kid, or um, it just looks really neat, and it's a really neat effect that doesn't really take too much um, to create. So if you wanted to add anything, so for example, if you thought that maybe the center looked a little bit empty, or maybe this area up here looks a little bit empty, what I would suggest doing is going to your original copy and adding whatever you want to fill in this space. Rather than trying to add it in the same spot on the final piece, I would add it to the original, and then you can always go back and add those things to the final piece. 
Okay, so now it's all complete. We've filled in those gaps. You can always go back and fill in more. Again, just try to do it adjusting your original rather than trying to freehand it because the point of using the original is so that everything ends up being in the same spot um, relative to the other pieces of this of the quadrants. But have fun with it. If you try this technique, we would love to see it. Feel free to tag us on Instagram or Facebook or wherever you're watching this video. We'd love to see your work. Thanks again for watching and we'll see you next time.